In this full-length tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this really pretty cat with step-by-step -step instructions. So stay tuned and let's get painting. A little while ago on our Facebook group, I asked our community members to send photographs of their pets with a view to painting a full-length tutorial here on YouTube. And we ended up painting this beautiful girl called Sorka, and I'm going to show you how with step-by-step -step instructions. I wanted to talk to you really quickly about the line drawing and the importance of having clean lines. Now, because we provide you with the reference photograph and a clean digital version of it, you can trace it down or you can draw it freehand if you want to, whichever way you choose to do it it's important that you have these clean lines so you're using your drawing as a guide to where you're going to be applying the paint now it will look a little strange I mean you can see that it's a cat here but I haven't put all the details in just the places where I know I'm going to be putting the paint so keep it as clean as possible and you can see that I've done a border around the outside too I provide you with a free trace down and the reference photograph and I'll tell you later on how you can obtain them but for now Let's get started with the painting. So as you can see, I've decided to do a gouache background for this painting tutorial with this kind of color palette in mind. I didn't want to stick to the original painting for the background. I really feel that it looks quite cool with this really strong colored background. And I'm also going to be using a mixture of watercolors here. There's a selection from um, both Daniel Smith and Windsor and Newton. And because I tend to change up the colors as I work through, because I don't do these tutorials in advance, I'm kind of working along with you you. Um, I will link all the colours that I'm going to be using and to talk you through them as I work through. This is the little mixing palette that I use from Etcher. It has two compartments like this and plenty of wells and of course it's ceramic so it doesn't stain. This is a flat synthetic brush that I'm going to be using to apply the gouache and this gorgeous set of brushes from Etcher. These are synthetic watercolour brushes and so to begin with let's press on with our background colour. Now I've only got primary colours for my gouache set here and I'm using an old watercolour brush just to mix them together. The kind of colour that I had in mind was this sort of muted purpley tone. So we have plenty of white along with the red and the blue and I'm just mixing them together with the smidgen of black and a smidgen of yellow to create this kind of beautiful muted purpley pinky tone. Now of course you don't have to use gouache for your background nor do you have to use it um, this particular color, so just use what you have. I'm adding a little bit of water here and using my really old brush from a, I think it was from a set that I bought in Hobbycraft. So this is a, a sort of really, really inexpensive brush to apply the gouache, although you can use your watercolor brushes. So using the flat side of my flat number eight brush here, just to apply it straight onto the paper, adding a tiny bit of water, working around the frame that I have put on as you can see me doing right here. Now, what I will say is if you are new to watercolor painting, remember, it is all about building up our layers. Now, for sure, this cat is going to look a little bit strange as we work through because it's all part of the watercolor process. So if you are new to painting, I highly recommend that you watch this sort of strange phase unfold and um, just see it come to life at the end. So stick with it. It's all part of the process and I know that many of you have spoken about what we call the ugly duckling stage. Perfectly normal, can't be avoided. So just watch this process all the way through. I'm just using this old brush to pull the paint, this is the gouache paint, to the outline that we've drawn in. And remember I said at the start how important it is to have this really strong outline, really clean edges, so that we just know where to apply the paint. Now, I know this background is looking a little bit patchy, but honestly, I don't mind. We can really kind of make it blend together a little bit with some water later on if you want to. But the idea here was to not have a flat background, but just to have a sort of a strong colored background. And I wasn't too fussy if it was going to be a little bit untidy. I just wanted a solid color here. So carrying on the process at the other side, and all we need to do is just let this color dry, clean down our palette, and then we can think about the watercolors that we're going to be applying later. So not too fussy here, just applying the gouache colors like this. Now, because I've only got these few colors, these primary colors and a black and a white, I like to mix my own, but of course, if you have got a set with different colors in, then feel free to use whatever color that you want to. Now the gouache is pretty much dry and the colors that I've chosen to mix first of all are Buff Titanium from Daniel Smith 
and I'm going to be using my number six from Etcher. This is a round brush and also my number three and possibly my number one as we work through. I will put all the materials that I'm using today in the description box underneath this video. So the colors we have are buff titanium, buff titanium with moon glow, as you can see me mix in here. And the other color is of course, the raw umber with a tiny bit of moon glow. Moon glow is a really beautiful color by Daniel Smith. And I know that many of you have used it in the past. If you don't have moon glow, you could use something like um, a neutral tint or something like that. So we have Moon Glow here with a tiny bit of buff titanium. Because Moon Glow is a granulating color, it kind of gives this, um, the ear of the cat, um, a really sort of special look. This is Moon Glow on its own. I'm just adding a tiny bit to the raw umber and we're working wet on wet, which means I've applied the water, the water where I want to drop the paint. This is a great way of starting your washes because it means that it gives you a little bit more control and it gives that paint a really beautiful soft edge. You can see how I'm dropping in the colors like this, just working around those lines and pulling it into the sort of fluffy, hairy bits that we can see here on Sorka's face. Notice how the colors are separating a little bit with that moon glow and the same on the other side just picking up the color that's moon glow and buff titanium, dropping in that first wash. And then we have buff titanium with moon glow on the other side there, noticing how it just splurges into the outline, dropping in that raw amber at the side. So at the start, I said we launched a competition on our Facebook group and we picked this beautiful cat to paint. But if cats are not your thing and you're a dog person, don't worry. We also have a dog tutorial, which you can see here. And I will link the video on the top of your screen right now. And if that's something that you want to watch later, click through and I'll see you there. So continuing on with the process here, dropping in the moon glow like this, working around the little whiskers that we've painted, that we've just penciled the lines just to make it super easy as our little guide. So all we're doing at this point is just applying the color where we know we're going to be building up that color for sure later on. It doesn't have to be color accurate, we're just getting that color onto the paper. And you can see the colors that I've chosen from my palette here. Notice how I've got this puddle of water in the middle of my ceramic palette. This is really useful and I use it all the time. If you're familiar with my channel, you've seen me use this time and again. It just means that I'm not flooding my brush with water from my jar. I'm cleaning my brush in the middle here, patting it onto the kitchen paper and then using a damp brush to just blend those colors together. At this point, I'm just adding a tiny bit of the burnt, what have we got, raw umber and buff titanium. And again, just adding some detail here and there as our guide so that we can build on it or build on these colors later on. Doesn't have to be too accurate at this point. As I said, this is just to guide us later on. This is Moon Glow with a tiny bit of raw umber again. I'm starting to apply this color onto the nose. Now you'll notice that there are some paler colors here and we want to work around those. So applying the color like this, using the tip of my brush, this is the number three, working around that lighter tone. We've decided to keep the picture in screen for you. You've asked us to do that, so you ask, we do. If you'd like to have access to the line drawing and reference photograph, there are a couple of ways. So the first way is if you join our Facebook group, we are the Wonders of Watercolor. And you can see here that we have a media folder that we have 
all of our line drawings and our reference photographs for our videos here on YouTube. But not only that, we also have a student gallery where you can post your paintings and have some feedback from me and our other wonderful members. So there's um, a link to this in the description box underneath this video. So do consider joining us there. But if you don't like Facebook and it's not your thing, don't worry, because I'm going to put the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video so that you can freeze the screen and print it out that way. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Rose McMaster for letting us use the photograph of her beloved cat, Sorka. Thank you so much. I know how much this means to you. We've spoken about it. So I just wanted to say thank you here on the video um, on behalf of myself and of course our community because I'm sure they will love painting this as much as I've enjoyed creating it for you. So thank you once again from the bottom of my heart to um, letting us use this photograph that means the world to you. Okay, let's press on. I'm using the residual paint on my brush. This is Lamp Black with a kind of wiggly motion where we can see her ear uh, hit the forehead there with little sort of spiky bits where her fur is sitting. So we want this to have a kind of jaggedy edge. We don't want to smooth edges here blending in the colours together and just this little bit here where her nose hits the fur at the top. Working around these areas, just try to stay as true to the photograph as I can. We just aim to create a painting that looks like the, um, the little pet that we're painting here. So picking up the watery version of the ivory black as you can see me doing here, using the kind of stippling motion to create a little bit of texture as I work through. Even at this point, we can see roughly where we're going to be going with these lines, which is why it is critical to have really clean pencil lines at the very beginning. So when you trace down your drawing, as I said at the very start, try to keep your pencil lines clean. It's very tempting to put sort of sketchy edges in and do a little bit of shading when you're painting, um, when you're doing your watercolour drawings for the first time if you're new to painting. But 
the, it really is essential to have some clean lines. So try and stay as true to the line drawn as you can. Because we provide you with the reference photograph and the digital version of the line drawing, it means that it makes it a super easy process for you by just tracing down the, um, the actual digital version that we provide you with. We do the hard work so you don't have to. It's just a case of tracing down that digital drawing. Here you can see me adding some of the brown tones. So this would be raw amber mixed with a little bit of black. Again, just to create a little bit of texture here and there. We are still at the very early stages of this video. It's slightly longer than normal. This is a 45 minute video, um, but it does mean, of course, that you can get all the information, hopefully, that you need. So not only can you paint along with me and paint this beautiful cat, but you can also use the skills that you learn to create paintings of your own pet as well. So this is raw amber here. So are you a cat person or a dog person? Let me know in the comments. I'm actually, I think, a little bit of both, if I'm honest. If I absolutely had to pick, I think it would be a cat. I don't know. I love all animals, so um, I don't have any of my own. Um, but I think I would be a cat person, I think. Let me know in the comments. Are you are a cat or a dog person? So this colour that you can see, this kind of um, pinky brown colour, this is the Piemont Genuine that I spoke of earlier on. This is by Daniel Smith. And I'm mixing blacks, as you can see here, in different consistencies with a tiny bit of water so that I can um, just keep it a nice soft edge. At this stage, we just want to put some shade in here and there. At the moment, she's looking a little bit too white. Okay, these colours here are by Daniel Smith. We have Mayan and Cascade. And if you don't have these colours, Mayan, if you've got maybe um, set by a Gallo, this would be very similar to Harbour Blue. It's kind of like a teal colour blue, but if you don't have this at all, you could use any blue that you have within your own set. But this colour is super special, along with my absolute favourite colour of all time, Cascade Green by Daniel Smith. I felt Sorka's eyes had this beautiful, dark kind of emerald green tone, and these colours were absolutely perfect. Again, back to the Piemontite at the top here, because the eye on the kind of right-hand side of the photograph did have this element, so that's what I'm going to be using to paint her eyes with my number one brush and working around that highlight. A little tip is if you're working around small highlights like this, always go slightly wider than you think you're going to need to give yourself that leeway to work around the highlight. So just using a mixture of the two colours that I mentioned, and just putting them on where I feel they are needed to build them up later on. Of course, this is just our first wash. I also want to say a massive thank you to our Facebook community for submitting their pet photographs because um, we had hundreds of them. When we launched this competition back in May, this is actually from our first competition. We've just launched another one where we're going to be um, painting some more cats. I think it's going to be another cat painting coming up within a few weeks. So if you'd like to um, be considered for another portrait in the future, do join us there because we run competitions every now and again and you can have um, one of your photographs made into a YouTube tutorial if that's something that interests you. Again, do join us over on our Facebook group. This time I'm using the Piemontite, as you can see, with my number one brush. But this time I'm leaving a little gap here in the corner of her eye, as you can see from the photograph, and then just blending it through. This is the Piemontite Genuine. Again, just working around that little highlight. Also adding a tiny bit of the Cascade and the, I keep wanting to say Harbour Blue, it's Mayan, Mayan Blue, um, Daniel Smith. But again, as I said earlier on, it's very similar in colour to the Harbour Blue. If you've got a Gallo colours, you could use that instead. So we have Piemontite and the blue tones on the bottom here. You can see the Cascade Green in the middle of my palette there. Notice how it's separating to become this kind of, uh, it's almost like a goldy colour in the middle there. It's such a gorgeous colour. And I'm adding a tiny bit of black to the Mayan just to darken it up. 
and we can apply this color over the top of the existing colors now that they are dry to add that real sort of oomph and pack a punch with the color that we've got there already making sure that we stay out of that highlight So you can see how I'm applying this color now, just following the pattern that we have in place to brighten up and darken those values within her eye like this. Take your time when you're painting smaller details. Remember, there's no rush with these tutorials. It's completely stress-free. I'm just softening the edges of the highlight because I felt that it looked a little bit stark at the stage and I'm just using a soft damp brush to do this. Now I've watered down some of the same colour here and I'm just applying a watered down version in the centre of that highlight. You can just about see it here in the painting. Okay, so we're back to Piemontite Genuine and now we're going to brighten up the initial wash that we put on the eye on the right hand side. This is Mayan with the ivory black going over that colour. We can still see the underlying colour underneath just about here on the camera. I think you can just about pick it up. So clean brush and blending through. When you're doing this, you can take the opportunity to tighten up any untidy edges. And I'm just adding a tiny bit of detail here underneath her eye. And the same on the other side to the outside edge. So once again, this is the Mayan, and I'm just going over the colors that I've applied at the very start. Brighten up the eye, and tighten up any edges around that little highlight. Just adding a tiny bit of raw umber on the outside edge here, and whatever's left on the brush, I'm just patting it down with a watered down version, and I'm just going back in with that little um, tiny bit of Mayan, and I've applied that to the centre of the highlight in its really diluted form. This is a tiny bit of burnt umber with black. And this is Mayan again. And I've added a tiny bit of cascade green. You can see me just using my flat synthetic brush to lift out a tiny bit of colour there. So just a tiny bit of raw umber here. This is a number one size round brush from Etcher. I really love synthetic brushes and in the past I've recommended spotters. If you have still got your spotters, still use them because I absolutely love them. It's just that I haven't got around to renewing them. If you're new to spotters and you haven't heard of them and you don't know what I'm talking about, spotters are the same as uh, round brushes, but they have a shorter bristle and that means that they can make paint application a lot easier. I get mine from Rosemary Co. and um, I do have links in the description box if you'd like to check them out, but I absolutely love them. So I'm still using them, just haven't got around to doing them for my tutorials. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of detail here with some raw umber on the outside of her eye here and just strengthening up some of the colour on her ear and blending through. This is raw umber. Again, this one's by Winsor & Newton and we're just using some sort of uh, some brush strokes just to create some texture here. The illusion of her fur. And this is the, oh, what do we have here? We have some Piemontite with a bit of black. 
and again just blending it through with my number one brush. You can see how easy it is to soften the outside edges of the fur like this by using a damp brush. Just make sure that when you clean your brush in your tiny puddle of water that you pat it dry on your kitchen paper. That way you don't flood your paper with water and make your paint spread. We'll add in some black here. So now that we have the initial black colour on the top, we can, start, we can start to enhance those colours. Now this might seem a little bit strange, but I'm going to be adding some of the Mayan colour or even a little bit of the Cascade Green to her ear here because I did see an element of it within the photograph. And just by adding these tiny little switches in colour, it just gives your painting a little bit of a boost. Here you can see me just adding a little bit of texture to the outside of her ear. And here we have the tiny little bit of green that I mentioned, just a smidgen. We don't want her to look as if she's got green coloured ears, but it just gave it that little something. Just a bit of texture here and there. It's entirely up to you as to how much detail you want to put in your painting. I wanted to keep this as, try and keep it as simple as possible so that everybody can join in. This time I'm using my number one brush with the black paint and I'm working around some of the shapes that I'd created earlier on when I was negatively painting some of the sort of fluffy hairy bits that we can see around her ear like this. Just carrying on the process, building up those colours bit by bit. I'm using my flat synthetic brush just to blend any hard edges together. This is just damp, using a pattern motion just to splurge any edges and then we let it dry and we can start to think about building up our colours. At this point I thought it'd be really cool to put in some of her whiskers so that we kind of knew where we were going. I've added some yellow and in fact even by just dipping my brush in the tube there I added too much. I could have used um, the buff titanium but I just felt since I had my gouache out I would use some uh, white gouache and my number zero round to create the shapes of her whiskers like this. And by putting, a, putting in the whiskers at this point, I just felt it gave me an idea of where I was going with everything. And you can see how it already makes a difference by making her look more cat-like because the whiskers are in place. So if you don't have the white gouache and you didn't use the gouache background, if you could, you could also use something like the uh, Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White for this if you have that. But um, this really works very well, I think, especially if you decide to do the, um, the coloured gouache background. So this is just with the tiny bit of yellow, just to take that whiteness out of it, um, a smidgen of water to get it sort of um, moving a little bit. At this point, I'm also trying to create this kind of fuzzy outline of the cat, as you can see here, just by adding a little bit of texture around the outside to stop it from looking so flat against that background. So where we've painted around these shapes negatively, I just wanted to add a tiny bit more brightening to these negative spaces, which is why I'm using this white uh, gouache here, just to give it a little bit more definition. We are going to be adding a lot more colour to this, but just to get things sort of um, moving in the right direction. And of course, we can now pull this colour into the background like this. I'm just adding one or two hairs here and there, and now using this to enhance the hairs that we painted in on the ears. You need a tiny amount of gouache to do this, just a smidgen and it really does make all the difference. So I'm just using the same, this is my uh, number zero brush. This is a round brush, but I've always said when I use it, it's very similar to a liner brush because it's got quite a long tip. 
but any fine haired brush that you have will do this just to paint in some of the hairs that we negatively painted in earlier and we're just painting them in positively now so that just means that we're applying the paint where we want that white color to be we already have our guidelines in place now so it's just a matter of following those lines and building up our colors with a lot more confidence once again, I'm using this kind of stippling motion to pull the hairs from the side to make it look a little bit softer and give it a bit more texture. At the moment, we've got this hard edge on the outside, which is what we don't want. Again, creating some texture as we work through. We won't be painting in every single hair. It would take far too long, but it's just to give the illusion. So once again, I'm going back to these two colors, raw amber and ivory black, mixing them up in a slightly thicker consistency this time. So we have ivory black on its own, ivory black mixed with raw amber and raw amber on its own with a tiny bit of raw, tiny bit of ivory black in the middle there. So now that the white gouache is dry, we can work around the white color that we've painted. And again, just to strengthen up that outside edge. So at this point, I'm just taking the opportunity to just strengthen any colors that I feel I need to um, where I've applied those initial washes. I did feel the area around the outside of her nose here needed a little bit more detail along with the other markings that I've put in. So I'm just using the soft edge of my brush here to create a little bit of a pattern on her face like this. I've added a lot of water to the brush at this point. We don't want the color to be too strong. And working down the center of her forehead like this to create these little bits of texture and pattern. So pulling the hairs upward in this direction and adding a little bit of texture here and there. So now I'm just adding a tiny bit of texture to the, um, the area here. This is just with the watered down version of ivory black and just softening that outside edge with my number two, this is a synthetic brush. So I did feel that these areas between the whiskers on her face needed to be built up a bit more. So we're using ivory black again. Keep building up those colors until you feel they are strong enough. And because we're using a really robust watercolor paper, it will take quite a few layers so you can keep building it up until you're happy with the strength of color that you have. Because we start off with weak watery washes, there's no chance of this being overworked. And by overworked, I hear this quite a lot um, on our Facebook group. People are worried that they may have overworked their paintings. Um, overworked simply means that your paint begins to lift off the paper and can have that kind of muddy look that looks really unflattering. But if you're working in thinner layers, building up your colors slowly, it's really, really unlikely, especially if you're using good materials, that your painting will look overworked. Here I'm adding a tiny bit more of the ivory black, as you can see here to the little gap that I have left in my palette. And once again, we're going over the areas that we've already painted in, this time, once again, with a bit more confidence because we know exactly where we are going. Thank you. 
you can see that by adding the darker value outside the whiskers that we painted in, it really makes them stand out from her face. So just take your time and work through these negative spaces slowly, bit by bit, and take your time. Just adding a tiny bit of detail to the outside of her ear. This is lamp black. Again, I just felt that this area needed building up and we needed to strengthen the colour a little bit. So I'm just applying this at this point. We don't need to go over all of the colours that we painted in earlier on. We want to retain that beautiful green tone. So we're just carefully blending it through using that damp brush. So remember I'm going to put up the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video. So be sure to stay right until the end. If you're not on Facebook, you can screenshot it. You can pause the video and screenshot the photo and the reference, uh, the line drawing and print it out that way. So going back to the Piemontite, I have three petals here, one in a lighter and uh, mid-tone and dark value. And I'm using the Piemontite Genuine to paint over the kind of pink tones that we have on Sorka's little nose here. And once again, using the same color, this is Piemontite um, to uh, her mouth, applying it to the pencil line to begin with, and then just blending it outwards, not all the way, just a tiny bit to give the illusion of depth. So this is just Piemontite on its own here going on. So now we need to just enhance these little bits here, going around the shapes that we've already created and just put in some darker tones to the outside edge to give them a little bit more shape and definition. This is a very watery mix of Piemontite to the side here and just dropping in a tiny bit of um, ivory black. And some Piemontite at the side of her eye with a tiny bit of raw umber. Just continuing the process and adding the sort of fine whiskers and hairs and a bit of texture here and there working through. Just continuing the process following the lines we've already put in place to take that guesswork out. Just adding a few details here and there because I felt at this point that the this section of her body looked a little bit flat and we need to add a few more bits and pieces a few more details to this area here because you can see that there are definite white areas which we don't want so just mixing the colors as you can see on my palette using my plain water glaze which I absolutely love if you're familiar with my tutorials you know I do this all the time once the paint is dry on the paper I just use plain water and I go over the entire thing as I'm doing here you have to let it dry so this time we've let the paper dry for quite some time and I'm now mixing buff titanium um, to the bottom part here dropping in a little bit of raw umber you must make sure that the paint is absolutely dry before you continue to paint after you've done your plain water glaze. 
So we have buff titanium and buff titanium with raw umber. Now this is my number one round here and you can see this is going back to enhance in those whiskers. Just here and there, any details at this point that you need to add with your white paint or your white gouache will need to be added at this stage. And I'm also putting some, um, a few more hairs just on this section here, just a few more whiskery bits going in. And taking this final opportunity to just sharpen up some of the hair around this part of her face. Piemontite Genuine. Just add in some black to this, just to enhance the area around her mouth. Just a tiny bit of black with Piemontite here. You could just use plain black, of course. And I did feel that we'd lost a little bit of detail around her nose. So I'm just applying the ivory black here to sharpen up that shape. I'm also taking this, this opportunity to just fluff up some of the outside edges um, in the same way that we did with her face. We're going to do the same on the body. It was looking too stark and too flat against the background. So just using this opportunity to add a little bit more texture, working in the same way as before using my number one brush or any fine brush that you have. Just adding bits of uh, fur that you can see, which gives the illusion of her having a lovely fluffy coat. right onto that background. You can see what a difference that's made. Okay, so one more thing we need to do on this painting. I'm just going to use um, a thicker mix of ivory black to outline some of the features here and there. I felt that it needed a tiny bit of an outline. Um, outlining is my thing, you haven't got to do this. I just want to give it a little bit of a boost and make it stand out. So I'm going to use this ivory black to enhance some of the colors here and there and work through the painting. I'm going to stop talking for the, for the last minute or so of this tutorial. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. Stay until the end where we will put the line drawing and reference photograph and you can see the finished painting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.